testing, testing, one, two, one, two. It's me talking to you. Ha 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 ha. Um. <laughs> What's up, Wildcats? Hello and welcome to my couch. I live in LA now and I do have a room that I'm supposed to be shooting my videos in, but it's full of trash. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna hang out in my living room in this relaxed context. Are you relaxed? I am. Today, I just wanted to make a quick video because I don't know if you noticed, but Disney Plus launched last night at midnight. Were you there? Were you at the midnight release party for Disney Plus? Cause I was, and it was in my apartment. Party of one. Disney Plus is out now and it has all of the nostalgia and old movies from my childhood that Netflix used to have before everyone decided to make their own streaming websites. And so that's probably why I think it'll be successful Disney Plus because uh, Disney, I don't know if you noticed this, but they own everything, literally everything. I don't know if you follow Disney Plus on Twitter, which by the way, you shouldn't, you should be following me. <laughs> Always be, annoying but on their twitter they were tweeting like all the different properties that are coming to the streaming platform which made me realize how many disney movies there are that uh one i've never heard of and two look fake i'm just gonna run some disney movie posters by you and we'll try to guess if they're real or fake justin morgan had a horse the biscuit eater uh the apple dumpling gang rides again <laughs> and candle shoe okay pencils down they're all real. At least that's what Disney says. I still refuse to believe these movies exist. Speaking of things that seem like they shouldn't exist, Disney also announced that they would be creating a new original series exclusively for Disney Plus. You know how like every streaming service is doing because we can't not have all of them. You gotta spend a billion dollars a month. They're making a Star Wars spinoff about Boba Fett. They're bringing back Lizzie McGuire as a millennial trying to survive in the real world. So, uh, I don't know, it kind of sounds dark, but also I'll be watching it. And most interesting to me, they said that they were gonna reboot High School Musical and not in the way it seemed like they were trying to reboot High School Musical in High School Musical 3, where they just introduced all these random characters that, that were like supposed to replace Troy and Gabriella and the gang. And then everybody was like, no, and then they didn't. They're rebooting High School Musical as a, uh, a mockumentary that takes place in the high school in Salt Lake City, Utah, that High School Musical was originally filmed at, where High School Musical is a movie in the show's universe. When I heard that the high school where High School Musical was shot had never staged a production of High School Musical, the musical, I was shocked. And it follows theater kids putting on a showing of High School Musical. It's all very meta. And the show is called High School Musical, the Musical, the Series. So before we had HSM and now we have HSM TM TS, which looks like something that would be on a stopwatch, but why am I? Famous YouTuber Jarvis Johnson talking about High School Musical. I can't even finish that sentence without laughing. Longtime viewers of the channel will know that one of my earliest YouTube videos is of me uh, dancing to High School Musical. Um, I talk about it too much. I wouldn't call it an obsession, but doctors might. I actually mentioned this show when I made my video about High School Musical. So, you know, <laughs> I waited with bated breath every day until the show came out and watched it at Midnight. Okay, just kidding. I, I watched it this morning, but I was excited. They've decided to release the series episode by episode rather than like dropping everything at once because um, Disney Plus ha has decided that they want me to have work-life balance. And I just finished the first episode. So is the show as bad as literally every piece of evidence would lead you to believe? No, it's actually pretty good. So as I mentioned before, the show takes place in Salt Lake City, Utah at the actual school that High School Musical was shot at, which is something that they mentioned in the show. In fact, it's hard to imagine watching this show having not seen the original High School Musical because it's the entire premise of the show, first of all, but it's, it's referenced a lot. The kids, however, in the show could give two shits about High School Musical. Do you even know the plot of High School Musical? Of course. It's about Zac Efron dancing with a basketball. The show features a gang of actual teenagers who are 
actually really talented. You know, not that the original cast wasn't talented, but uh, did you know that Zac Efron didn't sing in the first movie? This would never happen to these guys. You've got, uh, it's gonna come to me. It's not Bucky, it's not Rocky, it's... It's not J J Ricky, it's Ricky. His name is Ricky. <laughs> You've got Ricky, who's an 18 year old skater boy who uh, hates musicals, obviously, and looks like if Edward Cullen were in NSYNC, he's the Troy boy. He's, uh, he, you know he's gonna play Troy. He doesn't know it yet, but we know. He's got all the, he's got all the characteristics that Troy would have. He doesn't wanna be in the musical, but does so to get the girl. Um, and he's also late to things, just like Troy was. Oh. We were so young. But he's never seen High School Musical, so he doesn't know how much of a Troy that he's destined to be. Then we have uh, Nini, <laughs> Don't You Be a Meanie, the Gabriella of the cast. She is the quintessential theater kid who's never had a leading role. Uh, no, she's only played a tree and the back of a cow. <laughs> Usually plays farm animals and trees. And then we have the supporting cast, which unfortunately includes no basketball boys, to my knowledge, which is a crime. Instead, we have Ricky's best friend, who, whose name is Big Red, which is a ridiculous thing to call him, so I will just refer to him as Toby from The Office. Something's never changed, dude. I've been wearing the same socks for three days. The closest thing we have to a basketball boy is EJ Caswell, whose name sounds like it should belong to a star NFL running back. EJ Caswell, most Instagram followers, wakes up looking like that. Doesn't know I exist. He is a mint condition action figure slash Glee DVD box set come to life. And finally, there's Gina, who is the old theater pro who just transferred to East High to be in the musical. My mom always says that if you can't be number one at something, it isn't worth doing. So I guess she's like the Sharpay of the group. Oh, I'm good. I'm already off book. Where'd you transfer from, Gina? Broadway? <laughs> So now that we've talked about the main characters of the show, let's talk about the show itself. Uh, warning, I'm gonna spoil the shit out of the first episode of the show, obviously, so there's that. The story opens up with the uh, brand new drama teacher at East High watching the, the high school musical movie in the parking lot of the school. Like, had she never seen the movie before? Seems kind of last minute. She's taking over this job to do this musical. So why is she watching the movie in the, the parking lot? Or she's obsessed with the movie and watches it every day before work, which is the world I choose to live in. For the audience, the fact that she's watching the movie on her phone in the first scene lets you know how meta the show is about to get. The beginning of the show kind of feels like a shot for shot retelling of the beginning of the movie our best friends are getting off the school bus, or no, they were just skating, skating to class, because they're so cool, but like, come on. This guy's a skateboarder. My grown mustache, might do a lot of things. It's the same place that the basketball boys awaited Troy's fateful return all those years ago. Summer's over, it's the first day of junior year. Junior year, baby. And there's something amiss between our assumed lovebirds, Troy and Gabriella, I mean Nini and Ricky. <laughs> is his name. Hey. Hey. Ricky and Nini meet up to uh, apparently discuss their relationship in public, and it becomes immediately obvious that this is a mockumentary. It was my idea to take a pause, okay? Well, now it's like, now there's so many layers because <laughs> it's High School Musical, the musical, the series, but the series is a docu-series about the students in High School Musical, why would they be making a documentary? And for whom? And as I asked that question, I realized that I am watching this show, so I guess I am whom. I guess it doesn't really matter why they're making a documentary because it's never addressed. So it turns out that Rick and Nini were in a relationship, but uh, for the summer, Nini went to a theater camp for one month and Ricky decided that they should take a break because He's afraid of commitment. I didn't want to take a pause. It was only for a month we could have FaceTimed every day. So while Nini was at theater camp, she found a new boy toy. And then Ricky is like, hey Nini, don't you be a meanie. Wait, is this a joke? To which Nini responds, thought you wanted to be the go up. Why are you trying to keep me teeny? I honestly think it's a bit of a heavy conversation to be having in public. Oh snap. This character is there too. I don't know if she's given a name. I don't think she's in the musical. She's just 
<laughs> the nameless best friend. We then flash back to the distant past of six weeks ago, where we see Nini confessing her love over a public Instagram post in which she is singing a song. What is this? That includes the fact that she loves Ricky. I do, Ricky. I love you. This is a, an extremely weird w way to confess your feelings. <laughs> and um, there are clips of them <laughs> playing Guitar Hero for some reason at like a bowling alley. Ricky now realizing that uh, it's his turn to reciprocate the love, decides that they should go on break because honestly, that's just teenagers, man. You'll probably have no reception in the woods. Maybe we should just like chill. Also, they've been dating for one year and this is what scared him away. He couldn't wait a month. You deserve what came to you, Ricky. You blinked, Ricky. You dropped the ball. And EJ Caswell, like his name implies, was, was there to pick it up. And, and, and run it into the end zone for a touchdown. Football. The breakup that is happening in public is ironically broken up by an announcement that everyone needs to go to the auditorium for like an assembly or something, where we're reminded that Ricky's best friend is named Big Red and everyone just says that casually and doesn't address it at all. Why, Big Red? Why do things have to change? The purpose of the assembly is to tell everyone that they have a new theater teacher, which isn't something that you would normally have an assembly for, I don't think. Gather around everybody, there's a new teacher around these parts, and she's got a gun. Go on, okay. The theater teacher, whose name is Miss Jin, introduces herself as an actress who is a big fan, I guess, of High School Musical, so it's probably her morning tradition to just watch the movie in the parking lot of her job every day, and was apparently a background dancer from the original movie. And I'm saying this as a background dancer from the original movie. At least in the show. Um, <laughs> she wasn't in the original High School Musical mo movie, I checked. She also introduces herself as a millennial. As a millennial. Which prompts Ricky to look directly into the camera and break the fourth wall on purpose. <laughs> Unlike all the times <laughs> that Zac Efron looks into the camera by accident. So obviously the show is very self-aware and uh, we like it for that, it's cute. We're also introduced to Carlos, the choreographer of the show, who has seen the first High School Musical movie 37 times and hasn't seen the sequels. And the first 15 minutes of those sequels. Which is heresy. Also, he's weirdly dancing in an empty auditorium when he's broken up by the STEM teacher. Now, it was my dream in high school to put on a production of High School Musical or to be involved in any way. That is why I learned all of the dances so that I could teach my friends and, and we could put on our own production of the show. And after that didn't work out for me, I, with my tail between my legs, went on to study STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math, only to now be coming back to my roots and talk on YouTube about High School Musical, which is why I am personally offended that the guy that they cast to be the STEM teacher in this show looks like me. I'm all for the arts, like I pay for ad-free Spotify. I'd just rather see our students practicing skills for the real world, you know? Is it the mustache? I could do that. Hey there, I know you're new here, but FYI, your assistant needs a hall pass because he's gonna be late for class. This guy's such a narc. I'd never do that. Meanwhile, EJ Caswell, Nini's new boyfriend, is fucking killing it. He loves her best friend. He supports her in her endeavors. She's just amazing. She's meant for greatness. And his hair, <laughs> and lack thereof are impressive. Also, he's co-captain of the water polo team and senior class treasurer, so he's good with money. And Ricky still can't make up his mind. Co-captain of the water polo team? Yep, senior class treasurer. That's correct. And then we get a slice of home life. Nini is playing Uno with her cute grandma and her two moms, which is adorable. And then we contrast that with Ricky's dad, who doesn't know how to use an instant pot. I'm doing something wrong. And might be getting divorced soon? Okay, I'm calling mom. Don't! And then Ricky, who is now obviously jealous of EJ, gets it in his head that he should audition for the school musical to get close to Nini, uh, despite the fact that he hates musicals. We hate musicals. Uh, and has taken a page out of the book of Chad. If you sing in musicals, you're gonna end up in my mom's refrigerator. So you know he secretly loves him. It's about the character Troy having to choose between being true to his friend Chad or following his heart with Gabriella. 
<laughs> but he's never seen High School Musical. So he tries to watch it in class and gets the DVD stuck in the computer. This is my nightmare. Then it's audition time and everyone is suspiciously talented. Nini is nervous to audition, but luckily EJ is there and is perfect. I get why she didn't want to come in costume. She's nervous. She wanted to wear a good luck sweatshirt. I mean, honestly, she could wear a burlap sack and she'd still be a star. I kind of want that sweatshirt. It, would it be weird if I was just wearing, if I was just wearing a sweatshirt from a random high school in Utah? Like what if somebody came up to me and was like, did you, did you go to East High? Uh, no. I'm just a weird adult. It's the second day of school and you've already damaged equipment in my new lab. I really suck in this TV show. At the auditions, Miss Jen gives everyone roles to audition for. You're probably a Chad. Damn. So everyone auditions and is great. As I mentioned, the cast is extremely talented of this show. And then it's Nini's turn to audition and she's very nervous. Uh, and <laughs> to add uh, to those nerves, Troy b bursts into the auditorium late uh, and asked to audition for Troy. Did I say Troy before? And I, I, it's supposed to be Ricky. And then like Carlos or somebody makes an offhand comment that Troy would never be late. Troy would have arrived on time. Which I hope was ironic because like, have you seen High School Musical? Troy's entire thing is stumbling into situations late and being denied an audition. The theater, as I have often pointed out, waits for no one. No, wait, wait, Mr. Arms, wait. This is the most Troy thing that could have possibly happened. Nini starts singing, she's incredible, but uh-oh, someone like spills coffee on the circuit board or something and it shorts the entire auditorium, which seems <laughs> like a, like an oversight. But lucky for Nini, her two, um, <laughs> her two boyfriends whip out their smartphone lights and <laughs> point, harsh flashlights into Nini's eyes as she sings the remainder of her song. And also now she's in a dress. The lights magically turn back on because it's the third act and they have to finish the movie. Ricky auditions by singing not a song from High School Musical. No, that would be the assignment. Instead he sings Nini's song from Instagram. What's this? Which is actually pretty cute. But what isn't cute is the fact that he has no boundaries because Nini is clearly in a relationship and <laughs> he needs to just let things go, but it's a love story. That's what love is about. Uh, it's about ignoring people when they say that they don't wanna be with you and singing songs to try and convince them otherwise. <laughs> and then Nini and EJ are understandably pissed at Ricky, but <laughs> they can't be pissed for too long because the cast list gets posted and guess whose cast is Troy and Gabriella? Gina and EJ. Just kidding, it's Ricky and Nini, obviously. Did you think that they were gonna right the wrongs of Ryan and Sharpay not getting cast as the leads in the original movie? <laughs> no, this is High School Musical. It's all about people who are unqualified. She thinks I'm a Chad. And that's the first episode. So, what do we think? Scott? Yeah, yeah, you Scott. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I honestly was pleasantly surprised. Nowadays it's pretty rare when a reboot is not awful. And I, I think the show, I think High School Musical, the musical of the series, did a good job of rebooting High School Musical for like uh, a new audience. For starters, the show <laughs> was actually funny. You're giving me uncommon depth, Miss Darvis. I'm dying, I'm deceased, yes. I think the premise works surprisingly well. The kids are really talented. The youth are our future, I suppose. They do a good job of balancing like kid and adult audiences. I was worried that I was gonna feel like a weirdo watching a show for children, but luckily they opened the show with a little pre-show that, that explained that this is for old and new High School Musical audiences alike. It's the next chapter for High School Musical fans, old and new. Um, and I guess I'm the old, audience now. And not only is the show funny, but it uses the source material very well. Like it seems like it was written by a high school musical fan. It's a shame my character was kind of a jerk, but I can look past that. I'm a mature old high school musical fan. And I, I like the way that the show is being released. I like the episode to episode thing because it lets, it lets the show breathe and lets there be a community watching this ragtag group of little theater nerds um, make a musical. So I think I will be watching it every week and be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter um, so that we can talk about it. Looking to the future, I hope that uh, there's at least one cameo from the original cast. Like, 
I'm sure Lucas Grabiel would do it. Like, what's he up to? <laughs> so I, I hope you like this video. Um, I, I really hope you liked this video because I want to make other videos about High School Musical. Like, uh, I still need to talk about High School Musical 2 and 3. So if you enjoyed this, leave a comment about how much you enjoyed it. And if you didn't enjoy it, thanks to Kai Revolt for sending me a message on Instagram. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and answer the following trivia question. It's been stumping me for a while. Can we just pull it up? Okay, here it is. What team? I have no idea what that means. Let me know the answer on the internet.